Welcome to the Retail Tech Podcast, where we talk about the full spectrum of technologies and implementation used in omnichannel and online retail. Make sure to subscribe to our newsletter at retailtechpodcast.com, and we always look forward to your feedback. I'm at the NRF, uh, the big show, seven, 2017 in New York today with Guy Yachiev from a company called Profitech. How are you today, Guy? Oh, I'm great. Thanks for having me here. Thank you for uh, talking with me. So tell me, um, what is Profitech? What does Profitech do? So we simplify the life of retailers. We're taking data, big data from everywhere in the value chain, and we turn them into simple actions. Those actions are then sent to the right users in plain language. So the users of our analytical platforms doesn't need to be PhDs. They can just they need to be able to read and then follow up the instructions. Okay, and how do you actually do that? So we take data and bring up the system really, really quickly. So, so let me go back. How do you take the data? Uh, either they ship it to us with hardware, with FTP sites, or they get us connection to their databases, data warehouses, point of sale systems, and others. So we have a grocer uh, that actually gave us access to their uh, binary files of point of sale system because they didn't have anyone that knew how to decode it. And so we got access to those binary files and consume it really, really quickly. Okay, so basically any way that the retailer can actually give you access to their, da- their data, you will be able to take, take that and ingest it into your system. Absolutely correct. We actually ask them not to manipulate the data before they give it to us. We need it in the root core uh, kernel in a way way that they ex- extract it because otherwise they will normalize it and you may find that some anomalies that are inhibited in the data will be lost. And so we try to find anomalies. Therefore, we tell them just give it to us in whatever form you can or let us go and take them. Okay, so that means uh, you're going to have to basically map your systems to the retailer's data to be able to translate what the data means, right? So believe it or not, but that, uh, that exercise takes us about less than a week. We actually build out our own technology to do that. That's not the value that we provide. We do ingest data really, really quickly. The value that we provide starts when our machine learning algorithms start running against this data and identify all the anomalies, the good anomalies and the bad anomalies. Okay, so what is a bad anomaly? Bad anomaly could be a fraudulent activity. Bad anomaly could be a vendor compliance, a store compliance. Someone, for example, hey, you have we had snow here just yesterday, right? Well. You hope that your stores put the shovel, the snow shovel outside next to, you know, next to the cashiers. We can identify immediately which store didn't put it and actually send them a task. Hey, please make sure that this, the snow, snow shovel planogram is being put on the temporary uh, feature display in the front. Okay, so, so that's assuming that the retailer is capturing the data that where are the shovels and how many shovels I have in stock, right? Actually not. They don't need to capture that data. Not every, most of retailers don't know where they have it in the building. They know they have it. They don't know where. Okay. What we do, we look for data and behaviors in the data. If you do have it in the right place, the assumption is that most of the stores will increase sales on that shovels by a certain phenomena. Therefore, the machine learning is calculating it and the expectation is that most stores will behave the same way because of the weather when they have this weather when we identify a behavior that is an anomaly we'll then translate that into language send it to the store manager to then put the shovel so they don't need the detail about the shovels they do need the detail about the sales by the minute from the point of sale that's an example okay so if i understand it correctly you if you know where the store is, for example, the zip code, you are actually connecting that to weather data, live weather data, and that goes into your, uh, I guess, cognitive or mach- machine learning engine, and it's used to tell a retailer what products to display. Okay, okay. In the old days, before 
prescriptive analytics, the next day you would say, oh, this store didn't sell enough shovels compared to the other store. You need to have time to open the report. You need to understand the report. You need to find the anomaly. You need to understand what to do with the anomaly. And you need to actually go and do it. There's so many point of failures with reports. And you probably need a different person for each one of those activities. <laughs> exactly. And there's so many point of failure, but people right. still are stuck in the paradigm of reporting. Let, if you talk to anyone, what do you do for on-shelf availability? Oh, we have a report for that. What do you do for pricing? Oh, we have another report for that. Right. At the end of the day, the store manager... Who's reading these reports and taking action? Well, so one of our customers... We have another report for that. <laughs> exactly. One of, our, <laughs> one of our customer, the CIO, did an analysis. She shut all reports down and tried to see who is shouting to get the reports. And uh, she found out that only 27% of the reports are being used by people. Can you imagine all the work that is being thrown at those reports? Now, it's not the people's problem. It's because the part of our reports needs to shift. Today, we have all the technology. We have the machine learning, the artificial intelligence. Turn it into prescription. Tell them what they should do in order to solve opportunities in the field. Right. So, uh, I mean, you know, in, in that case of the uh, snow and the you know, snow shovels, I think by the time that right now retailers get the information, this the storm has passed. And it's, you know, there's still nobody's looking for the shovels anymore by the time they get, you know. So that's like the on-demand, the, the immediacy of the data mm -hmm. is critical for retailers, especially even, even if you just look at the, the, the weather. It affects a lot of retail. Absolutely correct. We have retailers that give us information in five-minute increment. We have a kind of Twitter storm that we're listening to information. But frankly, when you speak with retailers about real time, sometimes daily data is good enough. Mm -hmm. It depends if they can act on what you're sending them. Right. And you need someone to go and act on it, right? right. So some on-shelf availability or allocation. If you allocated, over-allocated and under-consumed and you want to prevent markdowns, daily data is enough you can actually identify where do you want to shift inventory from to. But instead of a report telling you that, we can actually just prescribe, hey, please move this type of sizes, this type of shoes or jeans from this store to this store in a much more prescribed way. So I agree daily da data is good and I think that's basically what you are probably facing with majority of retailers that are using the technology that still doesn't have the real time capability. But 10 years from now, if you're sending information, if you're capturing and acting on information 24 hours later, you're not going to be surviving. Uh, absolutely. So today there's a lot of inter internet of things. My, uh, the speaking that I just did on the presentation with Walgreens and the O Alliance, we're actually speaking about RFID and IoT that moves and push retailers to more close to real time, like a mannequin with a beacon that tells you the traffic that comes in. We have customers in grocery where we identify times between transactions at the till, combine and triangulate with traffic coming in. We know that a trip at the grocery takes on average about 15.5 minutes. Well, so we expect X amount of till being open in order to consume the traffic so people don't abandon carts, which is a major issue. And that is very close to real time. We can tell the store manager, hey, you need to open more till or you can close some of the till. We do that already with the grocers. The same goes with department stores, with mannequin, with beacon, uh, MAC addresses. Every person today has an ID. The MAC address of your phone is an ID. If we can identify that and relay it to the person, we can actually have real-time messages. Retailers today, when they say real-time, again, it all depends on when can they act. Technology is already ahead of the curve. Right. You don't want to send too many messages to the store because you want the stores to work with the customers. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's so true. And I just had an interview with another company that works with the actual staff in the in the store. Um, the 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 thing is that in five or ten years, your most of the checkout is going to be automated. You're not going to have human beings. So, the employees in your store are going to be doing what you what you recommend to them. They are be basically displaying things, stocking and doing that kind of thing instead of standing behind a checkout counter. 
as well as servicing the customer. We always nice. say, hey, we want to serve the customer, but they don't have time if they read reports. One of our customers. They, they have to ring the orders. People are waiting in line, so they don't have time to help the customer. Yeah. Co correct, and, and read the reports in the morning. Yes. How frustrating is that for a consumer, shopper? We've all been there. So part of what we also do is identify who are the good salespeople, associates, and who are the, the, the not that good, someone that needs training. Uh, one of our customers uh, is a major, major retailer with 5,000 stores. And uh, what they did is our machine learning identified that there's the salespeople that have only one item per transaction and salespeople that have multiple items per transaction, right? And so what the prescription was, hey, put those that needs training with the A associates that knows how to sell right. and let them cross train each other in order to increment the overall basket and in the region that they did it they found a three percent increase in sales just by training people by themselves again you had the data right you just reported on it before right. now you have machine learning looking at it finding the opportunity and prescribe to you the solution yeah as, as you talk about how the, the passion that you have talking about reports <laughs> I mean I, I completely get you yeah. uh, and it reminds me I just I'm, I'm listening actually to a book by Mark Benioff the CEO of uh, Salesforce yeah. and their first logo was uh, the word software with the cross across it it seems like you need to do the same thing with the word report <laughs> yes, absolutely. put like one of the Ghostbuster <laughs> circles <laughs> <laughs> there will always be reports, don't get me wrong. You'll get reports when you, but the reports should be used at the aggregate to see how the company perform in a dashboard. But if a report, if you think of a report that needs to create an action, why do you think someone will actually know what action right. to do? Just tell them what the action you need to do. I mean, ultimately, really, there, there should be really no reports. The data should be used by the system to do things, and the report really for for the management should be in voice, right? It should tell you, this is what happened, this is what's yeah. coming up, and you ask, that's where Alexa comes into play. So that, my next question is, how do you work with voice? Do you work with voice? So right now, we're actually in discussion with uh, a major technology that already have the Alexa of the world. Uh, and uh, the idea is that because we prescribe it in plain language, someone can read it. So a robot can read it for you. But the, the, the gap of reading it or reading it, uh, re reading it or listen to it, that's a gap that is very easy to close in technology compared to what we've seen today is the paradigm shift from reports into the prescription. Right. So, so I think I, the, the, uh, interesting that you focus on the word prescriptive. What, how did you come up with that to distinguish? I mean, it, it is definitely, it makes sense. But uh, I'm interested to find out how did you come up with that phrase? So when you, know, when you go to the doctor, you have a descriptive insight, right? You describe, I have a headache, mm -hmm. I have fever. All those are, you know about it, you understand it, that's a descriptive insight. The doctor finds out what the root cause and prescribes something for you. Hey, you need to go to the gym more often, right? That's what happened to me. So. Uh, once that the prescription will solve the root cause issue, it also may hey take pills for the fever to go down, but that's not the root cause. The same goes for the data. When you have all of this data, you may find something that is the descriptive insight. Sales stop of bottle of water. What could be the root cause? It could be hey people stop buying bottle of water, or it could be it's not on the shelf and available. Based on the data, we find out what is the root cause. Is it that you have it in the back and you didn't move it? Or is it you don't have it in the building and supply chain didn't bring it? Or is it that you promote another bottle of water and therefore this one is going down? Could happen as well, right? right. If you have a 50 cents down on a bottle of water and here this bottle of water costs $2, you will not buy it. You will not sell that many of that. So you know the root cause. So you minimize what we call false positive by looking at all the triangulation of data like the doctor, find the root cause, but tell you what the prescription to solve it instead of telling you what the root cause. I mean, the doctor never tells you what the root cause. On the, on the stamp of it, it can, hey, you have fever, you may have the flu. But he doesn't tell you exactly how, he doesn't describe the flu for you, right? 
It tells you you have the flu, this is what you need to do. That's exactly what we do. We don't go and describe to you, hey, you stop selling it at 12 o'clock. You do have it in the shop. You promoted another product. We just tell you, based on what we know, what you should do, if you should do anything. If you promoted another product and you stop selling it, the product A instead of product B, that's good. You don't need to do anything. So this is interesting. You know, in, in online shopping, A-B testing or multivariate testing is so important. It sounds like you could also do the same thing with you. You could tell people maybe these are two options to do pick one of them or do, do you do you do that as well yes yeah, so we do a b testing on when they when a certain cluster we do machine learning clustering so when a certain cluster we can actually guide them on one a and then another cluster on b and then look at the result and ba- on the aggregate guide them to do a or b based on the result that's one two we also use crowdsourcing a lot of retailers have a lot of people working there. A lot of the time, the people working knows what the best. They know what the best for the, for the company. And so you can do thumbs up, thumbs down, like in Facebook. And so when you ask them to do A, B, C, they say, hey, A always work. And so then at headquarters, you can see, oh, you know what? A is the best. And they can also suggest things. Okay. So we also use the analog way of a b testing by people brain right right neural networks of brain of people right and we also do mathematic theoretical a b testing based on results okay so that's that's really interesting that you actually have that built in already so what does it actually take for a customer that says okay i like this i want to use it what's involved in getting set up and up and running uh First of all, give us a call. We'll tell you how easy it is. But the idea is that depends on the area. If they want marketing, prescriptive analytics for marketing, for planning and allocation, for inventory and supply chain, for loss prevention, depends on the area. We actually have a list of must-have type of data, preferred, and a wish list. And so we have a list of data. You look it up and you say, oh, I would like, uh, I have most of that. Then you hand it over to us. You prescribe to the solution. It's a SaaS base single tenant for security reason obviously and uh you can use it for three months it's pretty cheap for the first three months you like it it's very addictive uh so far anyone that uses it for three months continue on and then you use it for a year for five years you commit you get a price a better price if you commit for more and then you start using it but what happened is what we see is that the paradigm doesn't shift immediately it shifts gradually over about six months of use you use the data, to, you use the solution two weeks after you gave us the data, we train you on it, and then it's an IT independent and profit independent. So you don't need us to use the tool. You start using it, you expand number of users, you go into different directions, unlimited user model. So okay. we would like everyone in the organization to use it. So when you say SaaS model, is it based on store, based on, so it's, based on the number of stores? It's, uh, uh, the model is on a per store per month basis. You can decide how much, how many months you want to prescribe, and then you pay for those and it multiply by number of stores that you'll have. The minimum number of stores that we recommend is about 30, 40 stores to begin with because we need, the anom- we need to find the benchmark and the anomaly. Okay. Uh, so we ask our customers when they give us the data, don't give us only the 40 worst store because if you give us the 40 worst store, that benchmark is worse. Okay. You will not find the anomaly. Uh, and that's how we start. It's a very simple way of... We, we would like to see ourselves as a different type of software vendor very easy to work with right. you start small and you grow based on your own pace is the price something that's public uh, it's not public it depends on the size of and the complexity of the retailer okay and does it also matter product type it's all vertical so department stores uh, home goods uh, do-it-yourself type fashion furniture grocery, automotive furniture. We just have an automotive new customer. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, does this also give the management in the headquarters to also measure the performance or, I don't know how you call it, enthusiasm or work culture. performance of the store? Yeah, absolutely. It helps a lot with culture. So we do, we gamify it. We have a gamification inside. And so every you can actually have a dashboard of the users and how much, how many, much dollars each one of them are actually bringing back, okay. and you then give badges, you know, if you did more than others, and right. so you gamify it to the new generation that comes in. They're all about gaming, and so uh, at any given moment, 
executives can see how much how much dollars how, what's the monetary uh, agenda of Profitec or the prescriptive analytics solution inside of there by region by region store by store uh, at any given moment okay it's it's um, I, I think it's very interesting it's you know a lot of people talk about AI these days I mean pretty much everybody says I have AI and my, my I'm, I'm glad to hear that but my challenge is to really how do I quantify that is your AI the same as his AI I don't know machine learning I mean this is like I wish there was a way that we could measure these things or quantify them so when I sell my stuff I don't sell it as you buy my artificial intelligence this is why you should not compare one to another. What we just talked about was that, you know, in 1902, when J.C. Penney opened his first store, he didn't look at the store and says, you know what, I need to find something like artificial intelligence to run the store, right? They buy, they hold, and they sell with a margin. It's kind of the basic of retail. Now, everything else is noise. When we have a new customer, we find things, yes, we find things, but the value doesn't come from finding them. The value comes from the execution on those actions that are very prescriptive in nature and plain language that everyone can actually execute. Reports are very sexy. You can have a, there's a lot of solution out there without naming anyone that are very much more sexy than our solution. Everybody has reports. Everyone, nice reports, bubble chart, heat map, whatever you have. Staring at those reports would not generate dollars. Staring at it would not do anything. You need to translate that into an action. And that's the difference between my AI platform and anyone else. We find it, we turn it into a plain language, and we then distribute it through the workflow to the right person. By the way, sometimes it's not at the store. If we identify a behavior that happened across store, it may be an upstream issue. Walgreens just actually had a, an example at our session that it, it found a merchandise issue that goes across stores upstream, send it to merchants, they fix it. They fix it for all stores at once. In the old day, all those reports would have gone to stores, but stores cannot fix it. Right. They need someone to fix it up at the headquarters. So there's downstream, there's upstream, there's midstream, supply chain. So the idea of the machine learning is to find the root cause, because if it's not at the store, don't send it to the store, have the store people give them time to service customers right yeah so I, I mean I, I was like really dreaming or wishing if there was like a uh, quantitative way to sort of like you know we have IQ tests for yeah. for human beings can we have an IQ test for software languages that says how you know what the intelligent best, it is the best quantifier how many customers did you lose last year okay we have zero.